countries that have always been opposition to Israel. The fulfillment of Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 is at hand. Uh, and I began to tell the people Tuesday um, that the manifestation of what's going on in Gaza, you need uh, the enemy from the north to come down onto uh, the northern borders of Israel for Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 to be in play. And skirmishes have already started breaking out uh, related to uh, Hezbollah from the north and southern Lebanon. So before times pass in church, people have always had the attitude, oh, they've been talking about Jesus Christ coming in the rapture for years and ain't nothing happened. And then when we look at uh, Matthew chapter 24, I advise you to go back and look at Matthew chapter 24 and read it again. Because it talks about the coming of the Son of Man, i.e. Jesus, based off of the things that would be the precursor in Matthew chapter 24 uh, as an apocalyptic book. That as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the coming of the Son of Man. That men were marrying and eating, drinking, partying, and doing their thing, but did not pay attention that at the same time, God had a man building an ark. How is it that you can't watch somebody knocking down a whole bunch of trees and building something? Something bigger than he is. See, what God wants to do is bigger than what you're doing. Mm -hmm. God's plan is bigger than you. You are a piece of the puzzle, but you ain't the whole puzzle. Amen. Some of us think we the end all, the end all, and it's all about us. Yeah. And those are the type of people to get left when they shut the ark. Because it's never about us. It's about God's plan is going to happen with or without you. We have to understand that if you decide that you want to go to weekends on Bernie's and kick it, and you lose your life, it's going to be on you. But the knowledge of Jesus Christ would have that those that spirits are aware, awake. They will understand if I'm awakened and I understand that I need to look at the times and the seasons, but I don't know the very hour. But we would have a mindset to be ready. This is, once again, I'm going to continue to keep saying it prophetically as a prophet of God over what God is doing. This is not the time to take seasons off. This is not the time to lose your seat in God. If anything, you should get a, 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 a belt buckle and strap yourself to the seat. Walking away from Jesus Christ right now is not, one of the be, uh, not a wise decision. If anything, when you see Israel being attacked and God tells us in his word that we're to pray for Israel. Because he knows that the end time is near and Satan knows it's near. And he's trying to take as many people that want to play sleep as possible. And so we're going to continue to give you these prophetic utterances and how we need to be wise in this season to stay with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, to stay with him, we got to deal with understanding who you're battling. Many of us have not realized that we are battling a demonic force, demonic spirits. As Lucifer fell out of heaven, he changed into Satan, took one third of the angels. In other words, there's somebody that you're hanging out with that may be gullible. My God. My God. Might be open to, well, you know what, I'm, I want to look at my astrology instead of finding out what God said. Yeah. I want to play around with Ouija boards and I want to play around with tarot cards because I want to find out what's going on when the reality is you playing right in Satan's hands. And so we have to be wise in this hour to make sure that we stay tied to God's word because his word, his word, not mine. I didn't build it. It was his word will not return back to him void, but it will accomplish exactly what it was sent out to do. But many of us don't know the weapons of our warfare, not carnal. We're mighty through the pulling out of strongholds. You got to learn that you need to learn how to pray. Yes. Don't allow somebody to pray for you and you don't know how to do it yourself. Prayer is not built on your mama or your grandmother because the, the time that they may forget to pray for you might be the time you end up in hell. 
Stand on your own understanding. It tells us in all you're getting, get understanding. Don't think you're so wise that you can't get understanding. Teacher is not greater than the than a student. The Amen. student's not greater than the teacher. So here it is. Don't get caught off trying to self teach yourself when you ain't even knowing the way. Right. God will always use an Elijah to pour an, to an Elisha. Why? Because Elijah done went through some stuff you didn't go through. I'm dealing with this spirit of arrogance that's so prevalent right now for whatever reason. Uh, but I know a lot of it's deception because the reality is. Nobody is a God unto themselves. I don't care how deep you pray. I don't care how, how, how long you stay in God's word. The reality is you're going to submit to somebody. Jesus submitted to the Father. The Holy Ghost submitted to Jesus. God turned around and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So if the triune God, God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are submitting to one another and you can't submit to somebody, I know you got the wrong spirit. I'll just surmise to you and I'll tell you in this hour it, uh, that you got the spirit of the Antichrist. And so we have to understand what we're what we're battling. And so before we can tell you to put the full armor of God on, you do need to understand that it's a war. Yes, this is a war. But who are you fighting? Some of us, because we don't understand who we're fighting, we think we fighting the person that's next to us. It's called friendly fire. Friendly fire, you know what, because you don't like the way somebody talked to you or the stuff, but if they were correcting you, why not take the correction if it's going to be according to God's word? Mm -hmm. Some of us don't want that because the reality is we think we God as a little G. And we can find out if you're a little G and you don't submit to the big G, you ain't going to find who the big G is. And so we need to understand that there's a war going on. And a lot of it, men and women of God, the war is in our own members. What do you mean? Our own flesh. Our own flesh. Well, I've been in the game 50 years, but you ain't been saved but five days. Ain't nobody talking to me up in here tonight. You got 50 years in church, but you ain't, you've been evil, all 50 of them. I'm dealing with something right now. How is it that somebody can be saying they name the name of Jesus Christ and you mean as hell? It don't match. He sent his son because of the love of God. And if he sent his son through love and you want to walk around, I'm a believer, but you mean as hell. That means he ain't in you. You got another daddy. But take your Maury Povich. I'm telling you, you got another daddy. Some of y'all need to find out. We need to do a DNA check. Mm -mm, something wrong with your spirit, man. You mean evil. It done got real quiet up in here. I, got, I guess there's some mean and evil people out here tonight. So, okay, don't worry. I'm coming down your row. I'm prophetic. I'll get you in about five, ten minutes. You'll be mad and be talking about, I want to leave. I don't care. You think I care about you wanting to leave? I done had some of the best walk up in here. And they get mad and they leave. And guess what? When that dough hit them, where the good Lord split them, I'd be like, thank you, God. Because here it is. Then you ain't messing up the atmosphere. Ain't nobody going to talk to me up in here. We got folks who stuff like to mess up the atmosphere. And we trying to push and we got to push and we got to push for God's presence to come down. Because your attitude says, I'm going to stay up in here and jack it up. Yep. I don't like what the pastor said. Bump you. Who is you? Hey, I'm going to get tight here tonight. It's going to get some people getting mad at me. I really don't care. Because here it is. The word of God is real. And your opinion of me don't matter. How do I know? He called me. You didn't. You wasn't there back in uh, April 14th of 2016 when God says, I tell you to go to Kenosha. I didn't know what a Kenosha was. I'm an Illinois boy. I don't know what a Kenosha is. And say, go there and I want you to preach the truth. Yep, they're going to come against you just like they did Jesus. They're going to hate you. They're going to try to crucify you. But here it is. Even when they come in and want to do something against what I'm calling, I want you to still stand. Many of us buckle. And that's the problem. You buckling instead of standing with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the only one that's going to be standing at the end of the day. Tap your neighbor and say, stand, 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 stand. You better stand. You better get real. This thing is no joke. It's no joke. 
And so for us to teach you to put armor on in the middle of a war before you go into the battle, you need to put it on first. Now, if you don't know who you're fighting, you're just looking cute. Some of us got armor on and you ain't fighting nothing. Mm -hmm. You go ahead and go into the battle. I'm going to stand over here. So what you got the armor on for? Oh, I forgot. You won't like on social media. I forgot. You want people to say, well, you look like a saint. Mm, nah, you ain't. And so if there's a warfare going on, men and women of God, and we are on God's team, the enemy is shooting at you. That's why you got stuff going on right now. Don't think because you real nice looking, you got a nice little job, you got a couple of dollars in the bank is reason why you're getting attacked. You're getting attacked because the Jesus that you say that's in you. Now, I'm going a, I'm to a have a quick poll before I get into this teaching. How many of y'all feel like all kind of stuff is happening at you? Feel like you're getting attacked from every area? I seen what you said, woman of God. I said that ain't done nothing but the devil. That's because what's getting ready to happen. And so if you're being attacked, you should smile. When they start acting crazy, I'll be like, oh, we must be doing something good. When they cuss you out, you'll be like, thank you. Can I have another? I'm going to teach you all the different, the opposite of weird stuff because here it is. It lets you know that you're on God's team. When you're on Satan's team, they don't do nothing to you. They don't buy it. They say, hey, let me buy you another drink. Here it is. I got $5 on the weed. Come on, let's smoke. When you're on his team. But when you on God's team, they should be coming against you. You should have some negative stuff happening. All right. Now, we're going to deal with these four demonic rebels that you have to come up against. So let's go to Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter six. I'm going to read verse 10 and 11, and then we'll get to verse 12. And we're going to start to dissect these four demonic rebels that we battle. You can't battle something if you don't know who the enemy is. Amen. And I'll say it over and over, even if the enemy is you. That's right. <laughs> so unfortunately, I, I pastoring seven years and preaching for 30, I'm sitting back watching and I'm like, mm, God, I think we done missed it. I think the enemy is us. Think about it. When you fast, according to Daniel chapter 1, you fast. And even if you do a Daniel's fast or, or according to Isaiah 58, when you do an actual fast, you withdraw from eating food and you go into a place where it was in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, where he said, you know, this is the type of fruit that, uh, food that you'll have. And you're going to eat, uh, you know, stuff that has seed and it's vegetables and that type of stuff. No meat was actually being consumed in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. It came through Genesis chapter 3 the fall of man that they began to start having Bonasaurus burgers. When they started having hamburgers and Culver's got invented after Genesis chapter 3. You know, people with rib dinners. You ain't had no rib dinner in chapter 1 and chapter 2. Mm -hmm. You was vegetables, fruits. So the, watch this. So the body was designed in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 make man in his likeness and in his image and so he didn't have any type of rib tips in his mouth. Didn't have pizza. Didn't have all that stuff, but so watch this, watch this. So if he didn't have that then, and then sin was what you started craving. You started craving that which needed to be killed instead of picked. Y'all better come on, mess with me. Let's, get, let's, let's, let's go deeper. See, before the fall of man, they picked the vegetables, they picked the fruit. But when you start sinning, now all of a sudden you start craving stuff that has to be killed. You got to kill the cattle to make a steak. Come on, let's think. And so here it is. You're craving what's out of your flesh because you're craving that which happens through sin. Mm -hmm. But when you start to fast, now all of a sudden you go back to the original state and now you start craving that which is the original. I want what God originally wanted. <laughs> Ever figured out when you started fasting, all of a sudden you started feeling lighter? Your mind was sharper? Why? Because you ain't had that burger in your system. Ain't nobody talking to me up in there tonight. Uh-huh. Some of y'all laughing and giggling because you like, yeah, you was better when you was fasting. Tap your neighbor and say you was better when you was fasting. 
You saw God clear when you was fasting. Watch this. You were not nicer when you was fasting. After you got past the three days where you was having that withdrawal from Starbucks. Because I know I like, y'all had some spears jumping off, man. You start fasting with stuff. I got a headache. You are the headache. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some of y'all was shaking. Pastor, don't call no more fast. I like, I don't know, you a crack baby. What's going on with you? And what it was, well, watch this. That which had grabbed you in your flesh started speaking. I got a headache. And the first thing you say, I got a headache. I'm having withdrawals. I'm having withdrawals. I ain't feeling right. I ain't feeling right. Y'all know what I, you know what I'm doing right now? I'm mimicking the spirit that you were talking to. You're talking to a spirit because the spirit starts telling you, you got a headache. You're right. I got a headache. I ain't feeling good. I ain't feeling good. Call and response. Hear what the spirit is saying instead of overriding him and say, no, -uh. no, you getting out my system. Ain't nobody talking to me up in here. Come on, let's go a little deeper. We got to stop giving life to stuff that is actually death. He said, death and life is in the power of the tongue. I'm not saying not one bit that I'm broke. I'm just in inconveniently. Uh, I'm inconvenienced right now. You over there. I'm broke. I ain't got no money. Guess what? You're going to be broke and have no money. That's right. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. They that love it will eat the fruit thereof. So here it is. I'm temporarily inconvenienced because my money is in circulation. It's coming. The blessing of the Lord make it the rich and add no sorrow. God is trying to watch how we're talking. Does it line up with his word? But most of us don't know his word. We listen to Satan more than we do God's word. Why? Because as soon as you start reading God's word, you fall asleep. Ain't nobody going to talk to me up in here. Anybody want to tell the truth? You start reading God's yeah. Well, okay, here it is. Here it is. I start reading and all of a sudden I fall asleep. Don't you get relaxed? Anybody want to tell the truth? You start reading the Bible, all of a sudden you get relaxed. Why? Because the word of God is the prince of peace. So what happens is as soon as you start reading the word, you start getting relaxed because peace comes over you. That's why you fall asleep. Jesus is the prince of peace. So you start getting relaxed and all of a sudden you start falling asleep. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all look asleep right now. I can look at your spirit. You look asleep. Tap your neighbor and say, wake up. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all got startled right there. Watch this. Now, when we look at uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We started to break that down before. And then it says, put on the whole armor of God. It's telling you, put on. Don't take off. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. We are in a war, and the only way you're going to stand is if you have the full armor of God on. If I don't know what the full armor of God is, then I'm not going to be able to stand if I don't have it on. You're going to need it on. There, uh, I, I've started... Uh, Telling a couple people, I want you to go back and look at the movie Left Behind. It's uh, Kurt. I want you to look at the Kurt Cameron one, the old one that has the grainy pictures. I want you to go back to that one. It's the year 2000. Now, back then, everybody was yelling about Y2K. Some of y'all young folks don't know what that is. The world is going to end at 2000 and everybody's selling stuff at 1999 like it's a fire sale. No wars, no real rumors of wars, no nothing because you think because we were getting ready to step over to the digit two for 2000 changing from one, i.e. 1999, you thought the world was going in and people were selling stuff and acting crazy and the scriptures had not even been fulfilled yet. That's why you stay tied to the real director. Amen. It's him. Yeah. That's why we're living in a different day. And so for you able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the things that's happening, you need to understand that right now, right now, right now, you need to stay tied to the word of God. And the only way you're going to stand is if you have the armor on. It does not tell you to take it off. 
It never tells you to take it off. It tells you put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We broke that down, the aspects of the devil. Satan has a demonic structure in the second heaven that he has been given authority over for now. That's why evil is increasing. He has uh, demonic spirits that are underneath his authority, and they're set up just like governmental hierarchy. And so with him being the top demonic spirit in that hierarchy, the wiles, the, the, the re repercussions, uh, the systematic systems that he works and how he maneuvers into people and to work through people, we have to understand that you got to be able to discern by the spirit of God what you're dealing with. Some people are possessed, but some people got a demonic influence where it's a demonic attachment that's driving them. It's not possessing them. It's two different things. All right. When a demonic possession is happening, they're driving. The, the demonic spirit is driving the car. You just in there. Ain't nobody talking to me tonight. But when it's just something where a demonic spirit is trying to attach itself, it's hit, hit, trying to hitchhike. It's trying to stand on the outside. Can I can I get in? And we trying to figure out are you going to let that demon in so it can tell you which way it want to go. You let him in the car. Next thing you know, he going to want to drive. Ain't nobody talking to me tonight. And so we got to find out where we are and what this attack is. And so demonic spirits are real. And then when you get to verse 12, now it starts to break down the four that are identified uh, by Paul. And it says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We told you last week that wrestle is the Greek term that speaks to a wrestling match back in the day. And it was not like today's wrestling. Today's wrestling, you pin somebody. They say one, two, three, you tap out. And then the person who will pin, the person wins. And that day they wrestled you, but the wrestling was to grab you around the neck and pin you to the ground by your throat. Right. And then whoever pinned you by the throat down to the ground, they had to gorge your eyes out. So now we would know that you're a loser because you lost your eyes. So they can tell first you was in the fight, but I can tell you lost the fight. I'm trying to tell believers, just don't go to church so you look like you're in a fight, but you look like you lost. You can no longer be just going to church and then some people with their attitude, oh, here it is, I don't go to church with stuff, it ain't nothing for me at church, it's religion and this and that, but here it is, you're out in the world and you're still losing. See, what it is, is sometimes you church hurt because you don't went to the wrong church and the pastor really wasn't a pastor sent by God. He was somebody that was called a hireling. He was one that was after a dollar bill. See, I ain't after your money because you ain't got enough for me. <laughs> we can empty all y'all pockets. Y'all ain't got enough for what I need to do in God. I need about seven or eight million dollars like yesterday to build these campuses in Milwaukee and Kenosha and then Puerto Rico. And so ultimately, you got to understand that God sends you somewhere. I feel this in the spirit. Most people, we go to churches because somebody told us to go there that God didn't tell us to go. So when you go to a church that God didn't tell you to go and then you find out you get hurt, who really got hurt? How did you get hurt? You got hurt by your own self because God didn't tell you to go there. You need to find out where God told you to go and then you obey where he told you to go, even if you don't like it or not. But then when you get there, here's another level. Once you get to that church, will you submit to what he sent you to? Some of us won't submit to what he sent us to because we think we should be the one running it. Ain't nobody talking to me tonight. It got real tight up in here. And so the realities are if God sent you somewhere, here it is. You're there to learn. Tap your neighbor and say, you're there to learn. You're there to learn. You're there to learn, to learn, to learn, to learn. Why? Because there is a real warfare that's going on. And so what we find here, he says, so the, they will wrestle not against flesh and blood. So this wrestle is to pin you to the ground, gorge your eyes out so you can be looking like a loser. And you lose your sight. If you gorge, gorge my eyes out and I no longer have the ability to see through, through my eyeballs, the reality is I can't see nothing. So I need help to be able to walk around. Some of us need help in the spirit. Some of us need help to be able to see in the spirit because the reality is the devil done pinch you down in your life. Mm -hmm. Before you found Jesus Christ, you was out there smoking till you, your head fell off. You drunk everything. 
Here it is. How is it that you know you, you're really in the world that they'll sit back and tell you, man of God, when you found Christ, we don't come ask you to come smoke with us no more and drink with us no more. But when you was out there in the world, they give it to you for free. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all, they still trying to give it to you. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all like, mm, I'll take a glass of that. Y'all don't, don't think I don't know what's going on in this church? I'm the pastor. I know some of us is like, well, the scripture said. You know how you lie about the scriptures? You know, little wine for the stomach's sake. No, you down the whole bottle. It was a whole fifth. And you was lit. Don't come up in here talking about, I need deliverance. <laughs> I need prayer, pastor. I'm going to be like, first of all, hold on. Let me pray for you. Because you smell like so much liquor. I'm catching a contact. I'm over here like, oh, Lord, he, wait a minute. <laughs> Why? Because we got folks who are stuff that really not submitted to the spirit of God. Because you can't be half in and half out. For you to even put the armor on to even realize that you're in warfare, you got to so totally submit yourself to Jesus Christ. Because watch this, he's not handing out armor to people that's not really in the war. If you're half in, half out, you're not getting armor because you're really on the other team. And some people think that they're getting armor and say, I got to put on the whole armor of God. No, you know the verse, but you ain't really living it. And so what we find that the text starts to tell us that this wrestling is going on and it's not about flesh and blood. You got to see beyond what you see naturally. Here's, here's the revelation, okay? Javier, stand right here. Face that way. I'm going to show you what they're talking about in terms of wrestling, not against flesh and blood. Dakota, stand behind him. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Javier is a man who wants to see God. He wants to do things right. Here it is. But without Jesus Christ, there's a problem. No conversion without Jesus Christ. You still be the same. Now, this is what flesh and blood speaks to. You can look at Javier and see him as a man. But flesh and blood speaks to we're not trying to battle him. Come up a little closer. We have to understand that we deal with men and women every day. But we have to see beyond them and see what's attached to them. See, I can conversate with Javier, but if he ain't right, I need to see what spirit behind him is speaking. Now put your hands over here. Because a spirit is driving a person that does not have Jesus Christ. So we're interacting with people, flesh and blood, but not realizing some of them got spirits. That's why I'm not going to argue with you when I know you got a spirit because I see you, but I see what's really running you. Because without Jesus Christ, you got something that, watch this, move him that way. Just move him around. You got something that's moving him. So I may be talking to him, but I need to talk really to the spirit that you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So we've got to stop just coming thinking church is just, oh, I'm a Christian. Man, please. And one thing I got problem with the evangelical church, and they probably going to be mad when they hear this on the radio, but here it is. You cannot sit there and tell me, oh, you know what? I support this man that says his name is Donald Trump. But he says it's okay to grab a woman's crotch. Watch this. That's the spirit of lust. So I ain't worried about the man. I got to see the spirit attached to the man. Because flesh and blood is not what I wrestle with because what moves you will be the fruit that's going to come out of you. 
So I got to see what's moving you. So when we talk about wrestling not against flesh and blood, I need to understand there's other spirits in play. And we need to have this one number one thing, and we better start to get it so we can start to understand demonic spirits. We have to be able to discern. Discern. Why? Because watch this. What if this man gives his life to Jesus Christ and the spirit is gone? I can look at him one day with a spirit, but the next day if he accepts Jesus Christ, the spirit is gone. So now I look at him and I'm like, ain't nothing there. So I can't treat him the same. Exactly, Jalen. And the problem is... You see somebody one way and don't know if they accepted Jesus Christ. If they accepted Jesus Christ, old things are passed away. This leaves because now the blood of lamb, Jesus Christ, it cleanses him. So how he was thinking yesterday ain't the same way he going to think today when he accepted Christ. And judgmental Christians, judgmental people that say they know Jesus, you don't know him. You know religion. And religion says, you're still the same guy. You're still the same guy. No, you got to know me by my heart. Because when my heart changes, my attitude changes. My character changes. Everything concerning me changes. And the problem is, we wrestling against what we see. Oh, that's a man. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something. Somebody going to get mad, but here it is. We'll sit back and be like, he a man. All men are dogs. They done got real tight up in here real quick. All they want is to have sex with women. It done got real tight up in here. Ain't nobody talking to me now. Here it is. All men's a dog, but you ain't never checked the heart. They're not built the same. Because when Jesus Christ comes into my life, I look at women not like a toy, an object. Y'all ain't messing with me tonight. It's a, so here it is. You got to first find out, do you know Jesus? Ain't nobody talking to me. Because the reality is, you mad at all men because you keep picking the ones that don't know Christ. Ain't nobody talking to me up in here. Man down, shots fired. And you wonder why they done took your money, took your draws and everything else, and you mad. I'm the pastor will say what you won't say. You over there, ooh, 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 I hate all men. No, you got bad discernment. You keep wanting a thug instead of, <laughs> don't sit down. I need to quit. I want a bad boy. I want a bad boy. In your flesh, you want a bad boy because you want him to knock you upside your head because you seen your mama get her head knocked out. And oh, Ain't nobody talking to me tonight. That's the problem. We don't want nobody that loves the Lord. They're not fun. Please, get around me and watch some demons get cast out. It's a whole bunch of fun. Because you understand what you're battling with. Now let's get to this because somebody mad. I done exposed your whole life. Bad boys, bad boys, what you going to do? I want one of them. Mm-hmm. Depressed, broken up, jacked up, talking about, and then you come to the house of God. I think I want to serve God now. <laughs> Leg half missing. I, I think it's time for me to, I guess I will take one of them church boys now, I guess. You half crazy now. Why would we want you? Ain't nobody talking to me up in here. Let me. See. Why would we want you now? I did 30 years of preaching, and now you come in here and you jacked up from the flow. Oh, Super saint. Let me stop. All right, I'm just messing around with y'all. Okay, all right, here we go. And so, so we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Watch, watch this. But, 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 but negates everything before. We're no longer going to wrestle against what's happening in our flesh and the things in other people's flesh. You have to understand, we're not going to wrestle with that stuff, but we have to get to the crooks of what's really going on. There's demonic spirits that are coming in opposition against those believers in Jesus Christ. How many people are believers in Jesus Christ in here? I'm going to look down so I don't know you're lying. 
Okay, all right. Anyway, so yo, you did raise your hands. Here it is. So it says, but against, watch this, principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. We're going to break down these four demonic rebels that you fight. The first one is principality. Turn to your neighbor and say principalities. principalities. You'll notice that it has a S on the end of the word principalities. Okay? If you can, just kind of slightly underline the S. Or in your notes, identify that it has principalities. In other words, it's more than one. More than one. Principalities. This demonic structure is this. It is a strong spiritual ruler, but it's rulers. So there's multiple rulers spiritually that are assigned over nations, cities, with the objective to wreak demonic activity over those nations, cities, and to keep them bound demonically. Principalities. Now, these principalities work in a conjunction as a hierarchy. Ever seen a pyramid scheme? You have the person at the top, they the one getting paid. People underneath them, whatever that layer is, they're, they're the ones that's getting paid next. And then the one person that comes in last, you doing all the work. <laughs> Ain't nobody talking to me up in here. Amen. So the ones at the top, watch this, don't have to do any work after you come in. And so what happens is the people at the bottom are the ones just doing all the work. This principalities are those that are at the top. They have a greater structure, a greater insight, and they're the ones that are getting paid. And so the S on principalities is that they have been assigned by the leader of the demonic kingdom. The demonic kingdom is, i.e., it used to be Lucifer when he was in heaven, but when he fell, he became Satan. I continue to tell you, whenever you start walking away from God, you fall. And when you fall, you fall what? Into darkness. And when you fall into darkness, you change. And when you change, you're not the same. So what you were when you were with God, you're not when you fall. Because when you fall, you literally become something that's so grotesque that darkness is where you hide. Why would he want to play in darkness? Because he don't want the light to show what he looked like. That's why you have to understand, why do people go seeking a mate at a night club? Keep the lights off. What happens when they turn the lights on? Party over. Ain't nobody talking to me up in here. Party over. They say, okay, light is off. We good. We can move around. You can roll up on somebody and don't know how ugly they are. Ain't nobody talking to me up in here. And some of them, the strobe light, make them look so much better. They dancing, and you know they can't dance because you just see the one part of the leg moving. Party over, turn the lights on. Oh, my God, I've been talking to you the whole time. Oh, Lord, I thought you was a woman. <laughs> Ain't nobody talking to me up in here. Tap your neighbor. Keep your eyes open. Stay out of the dark. Stay out of the dark. Some of y'all ain't going to say it, but some of us have been dancing with the wrong one. Ain't nobody talking to me up in here. All right, let's go. Now, principalities. And so these principalities are governing and ruling in the second heavens. What is the second heaven? Where God is, that is the, considered the third heaven. The earth realm in which we're in today is considered the second heaven. The second heaven is what Satan has been given authority over because of the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3. So that's why we see evil increasing. People say, well, why is God letting all this bad stuff happen? No, he not you doing it. Amen. That's right. 
You're linking up with demonic spirits and yielding your members to demonic spirits. And so more evil is increasing. That's why in Genesis, it says it like this. In Genesis chapter six, if you go back and read it, it says that the God was saying, you know what? My spirit is not going to always strive with men because the evil was getting so bad because men was going with men and women were going with women and stuff. And then they was marrying daughters and stuff and everybody doing all this stuff, partying and kicking it. And God said, you know what? Before then, he was letting people live up to 700, 800 years old. And he said, you know what? We ain't going to let that evil linger in your body. I'm going to get to a place where I'm going to give you an expiration date and I'm not going to allow evil to continue to manifest itself because watch this. You're creating even greater evil. So he says in Genesis chapter six, he says, I'm going to cut it off at one hundred and twenty years. Period. You get one hundred and twenty years. And here's what's interesting. How many people was in the upper room when the Holy Spirit fell? Book of Acts chapter one. He said it was 120. He sent him to the upper room. He tells man in Genesis chapter, uh, Genesis chapter six, he says, I'm only going to give you all 120 years. And then when he decided to pour his spirit and let his spirit be poured out on man, he had 120 men and men and women in the upper room waiting for the power of God to fall. It's called Pentecost. Pentecost. Same time is what we consider where other people on the earth, watch this, in the earth, in the earth, earth call it Easter. But Easter ain't connected to resurrection. See, the problem is, it's the time of Pentecost. The time of Pentecost is the presence of God, Pente, many 50. That in the 50th year, boom, he fell. Power of God fell down and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the power of God. And it's the same time where people would sit back and say, oh, here it is. Something was birthed. Watch this. Something was birthed because the spirit of God was birthed in the earth because he told 120 people to go in the upper room and wait until the power of God will come, i.e. the Holy Spirit. This Pentecost is the same time that now the world turns around and says it's around the same time as what they call Easter. We understand it as resurrection because Jesus was resurrected on the third day during that time period. Here's what's so demonic. God was trying to birth his spirit and the world says, well, we're going to do something. We're going to have you celebrate it and call it Easter, which is nothing but a sex goddess. So we're trying to birth, watch this, the spirit of lust in the earth. God wants to birth his spirit, but we got Satan in the second heaven saying, I'm going to birth the spirit of lust, i.e. sex, because I'm going to make sure that what I birth, you take care of. It's a deeper level. We got people coming to church. Oh, let this child dance. Oh, I got to want to sing my song. Why are you singing your song and stuff, but you got lust all over you? What you singing for? Well, let's say it like this. Who you singing to? Some of us, you singing to the other dude. Ain't nobody going to talk to me tonight. All right, I guess, I guess y'all looking at me like, man, Pastor, you go way deep. No, we ain't got deep yet. Let's. Let, let's hit this. This principalities. So principalities are set up over regions. Here it is. So if it's set over nations and cities and regions, we need to understand what's in operation in your town. Right. At the revival uh, the other week, I began that. I think it was the four, the the third night that I preached there. I began to start to unveil what God has started showing me about the principalities and powers related to Milwaukee. Milwaukee is considered like this place of death and, and killing. And so the principality is the spirit of murder. And because they have been grafted and taken it on, now it's normal. Why is it normal for people to be murdered? Because the principality over that region has set that in a decree that this is what's going to happen. And then when we have churches that are not, not, not coming together to pray against the principality, to dismantle the principality, what happens is that principality is working in concert demonically and filtering itself into the people. So here it is. Life don't mean nothing. Because it's selling people. Watch this. Poverty. And death. Go through, the, go through the streets of Milwaukee. I've sat back and, and since I've been here, I've been driving through and I'm like, mm, this is amazing. You wanted us to set a church here. He said, it's the greatest place where they need the light. 
See, you don't set light in a place that already got light. You set light in a place where it's darkness. Why? Because people can't see. So here it is. When you go to your job, stop crying about, I'm the only believer here. I pray and I get my Bible and I feel bad because I'm on lunch by myself and I just feel like I'm in a corner and just the evil is all around me. What you think you're supposed to be there for? You need to be right up in there and you need to be like, hey, Jesus lives. What do we do? I'm going to go to my car and I'm going to open up my Bible in the car. I don't want nobody to see me. All these secret saints, they get on my last nerve. But if you want a lotto, you'd be over there. Ooh, look at my check. Why are we hiding? No, I think we're hiding because we really don't have him. God is bold. He don't back down from nothing. You don't back down for what you don't fear. And I believe a lot of us have the spirit of fear. But he said, I did not give you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So if I'm in him, I live and move and have my being. Why am I scared of that which is already sentenced? Put this in your notes, Revelation chapter 19, I think it is. Revelation chapter 19, I think it's verse 40 or something like that. Satan has already been sentenced to the pit of hell. If he's already been sentenced to the pit of hell, why are you scared of somebody that already got sentenced? There's nothing to fear. People ask me, well, you know, man, you, you cast out devils and stuff. And man, I ain't never seen it. I seen it on the movies. Yeah, you've seen it about this time, this time of year. It's October, and everybody want to talk about uh, all these demonic movies and stuff because they do it to you every year. Ain't nothing new. September, October, here come a demonic movie about some nun's head spinning around and a, and a doggone devil running down the church, and he jacked up the priest. I wish a, I wish a devil would roll up on me. How many of y'all been around me when we done casted out some demons and y'all was like, I seen it with my own eye. I wish a devil would roll up on me. What do you do? They roll up on you at your job and you be like, I'm with you guys. No. That was a lie. Well, kick it with devils. We cast them out. Jesus didn't run from none. He cast them out because he knew who he was. We have to fortify God's people to understand that there is a level of God's spirit and power that he wants to have availed to us in our lives. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. Real quick. Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. For all those people that want to get into the book of Revelations and be like, Pastor, teach us some of that deep stuff. You running from demons. Why would I teach you some deep stuff? Why? So you over in the corner shaking. You going to get them, Pastor? No, you get them. <laughs> Revelation chapter 19, verse 20 it says, then the beast, the beast, the beast was captured. So if he's going to get captured, why am I crying about him being loose right now? Wow. Come on, Revelation. Come on. Understand the word of God. The reality, he's getting he's captured. He's going to be captured. So I ain't worried about what he's doing. Look what it says. And the beast was captured. And with him, the false prophet who works signs in his presence. So there's a demonic false prophet that's working miracles, signs and wonders, but it's through a demonic force. And he's attached to the spirit of the Antichrist. Anything against Christ is anti. You got to watch what you're connected to. And for those that might get left behind because you don't believe what we're talking about, when you get left behind, don't take the mark of the beast. Find out what the mark is and don't take it. Amen. Trying to help because some people going to get left. Right. And when you get left, you ain't going to be able to call pastor. That's right. mm -hmm. Some of y'all like, for real? <laughs> no, nah, watch this. And so it says, then the beast was captured and with him, the false prophets who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast. Right. 
deceive, deception. It's thinking it one way, but actually having an ulterior motive that's going to make you, cause you to take the mark of the beast. They're trying to get rid of dollars right now. They're trying to get rid of their euro right now. They're trying to get rid of their yen. And all the stuff that's happening in Israel right now is going to give the ability for them to be able to wipe out all of that stuff and then have it on cards. It's easy to track you when you at this ATM and they know you was just there. Mm -hmm. And now they're talking this stuff about the chip in the hand. You better watch what's going on. So look at this. And so it says, which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. Remember, we just got finished teaching this past Sunday in service, talking about the enemy through Nebuchadnezzar uh, in Daniel chapter three was wanting you to bow to an image. Nebuchadnezzar was over a whole nation. So he wants you to bow. And if you don't bow, he's going to kill you. But you got to know that the God that you serve knows how to rescue you. He doesn't let anything in his jurisdiction die. Watch this. And so it says after they uh, and those who worship the image. And here's the key part. Then two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. The two, the devil and the false prophet cast into the lake of fire. Now I'm going to give you this weapon and I'm going to give it to you for free. When things start coming up against you and you start having situations, circumstances where you feel like the enemy is attacking you, remind him where he's going. Let him know. Say, Satan, you are already destined for the lake of fire. You already been sentenced. Ain't no need to conversate with him. What you doing, Mr. Devil? Why are you attacking me, Mr. Devil? You let him know. A, cast him out or B, you let him know. You are already defeated. You're going to the lake of fire. You've already been sentenced. When a person has been sentenced, they have to tell them, you got to report yourself in. So we got to take you into custody. Take him into custody. It's called apprehend him. You say, hey, this is a citizen's arrest. Ain't nobody talking to me up in here. A citizen's arrest because I have a, I have watched this. I have authority by the one that sentenced you. Why are you backing down? Amen. Because you don't know your word. Amen. And because you don't know your word, you won't walk in. Mr. Devil, I think you're supposed to, like, you, you're supposed to be in, you got to go over there. No, you tell him, hey, by the authority of the God that I serve, you've already been sentenced. So guess what? Loose my whole family. Loose my finances. Loose the sickness that you're trying to put on my body. Loose them in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the blood of the lamb has already defeated you. I command you now to get gone. And you'll see it happen. But you got to believe. If you don't believe, you're not even going to try it. And if you don't try it, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. Trying to teach this house because you're going to need it in his last days. Amen. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6. These principalities, principalities, rulers, spiritual, demonic, wicked rulers that are over regions. You need to find out what's happening in your region. Wisconsin, after research, is one of the darkest in America, but it will be one of the greatest explosion of God's presence known to man I asked God why would you have me come here he says I need to send you where it's darkest because of what you know now if he sends you where it's darkest there's going to be a warfare that warfare you have to understand that is not just for you, but what God wants to do through you. So that means somebody else is in darkness and they need to come out of darkness into the light. And until they come into the light, you still got work to do. This church has work to do. And God wants to fortify you with the weapons and the armor and the understanding that you can speak to the mountain and cause it to move. But you got to believe. Tap your neighbor and say, you got to believe, got to believe, got to believe, got to believe. 
as you're being taught, you got to believe that no weapon formed against you can prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, thou shalt expose and condemn. You have to believe with God all things are possible. When you start believing like that, now all of a sudden you walk different. You talk different. Your mentality has a firmness and a strength to it because you understand, wait a minute, the one I'm rocking with ain't never lost. If he's never lost, he's not going to lose now, even with where I'm at. Amen. And then you'll see what God does. Now, principalities try to restrict. I need you to put that in your notes. Principalities, demonic spirits try to restrict the movement of God. In other words, they want to block. They want to block God's movement. They want to block God's movement. I'm going to show you in Scripture where they try to block, and some people like to say their blessing, the blessing. Yeah, he does, they do try to block blessings, but I'm going to show you tonight they try to block communication. They block communication. Let's go to the book of Daniel. Book of Daniel, 10th chapter. Demonic spirits want to cut off your ability to communicate with God. That's why prayer is key for you. And prayer is not this religious stuff y'all see on TV. It's all, this, oh, Heavenly Father, oh, Spirit of God. It ain't a sound. It ain't a cadence. It's not running around. It's communication. Some of our best communication is when we're broken. Ain't nobody talking to me tonight. Some of our best communication is when you're broken. When you know you can't do it yourself and you just be like, God, if you don't show up, something bad going to happen. You ain't getting fancy with your words. Well, over in the book of Genesis the 50th chapter. No, you'd be like, Lord, help me. I need you to help. This situation is too much for me. I'm yielding to who you are that you would help me and help me now. Now, in Daniel chapter 10, we're going to uh, dissect this, and this is why I need to deal with these four um, demonic spirits so you can understand them clearly. Daniel chapter 10, verse 1, it says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of uh, Persia, circle the word Persia. Now, Cyrus is a king of Persia. A message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. They changed his name because he was now underneath the Babylonian captivity. Israel was held captive, taken out of their, out of their land, and they were under the rule of of Babylon and this king Cyrus was in authority he's ruling and he's in Persia and it says uh, the message was true but the appointed time was long sometimes when you pray things don't happen right away that's a rap song ain't it mm, Lord have mercy I'm a rapper I better go and get this get these bars put down here Watch this. So the message was true, but the appointed time was long and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. Daniel could perceive and understand and translate visions and dreams. That's part of his gifting. Watch this. Everybody has different giftings. Different giftings. And because you might not have a gift that somebody else has, it don't mean that your stuff ain't worthy. Let me help this house. See, your gift is needed because if your gift, watch this, is implemented into a house, then the house is stronger and the house is about saving souls. People can come into the house and they can find a place of rest. Amen. Why? Old school used to say, for their weary soul. Amen. If I'm out in the world, I want to find a place where I can come and I can get healed, delivered, set free from the things that I learned or dealt with out in the world. But then if I come in here and the reality is you ain't right, you judgmental, I'm going to run right back out. Because here it is. You have to understand you got to get the fish into the boat before you skin it. Some of us want to judge people. I, 
Yeah, watch this. Oh, your skirt too high. Well, yours used to be high. I'm going to say something to get myself in trouble. I felt this thing. Here it is. You just mad because your skirt high and no nobody want it. I told y'all, say what you won't say because here it is. And so you mad because there's some hot thing come in and where stuff and hers is down. She just came in. You old and yours still been up. Want to judge people. That's why they run out of church because you judging people. You get them in here and then you find out here it is. That ain't the way to attract no man. <laughs> ain't nobody talking to me up in here. I'm going to get myself a trouble. What time that say? See, men, men are hunters. Men are hunters. And if you giving it so easy, they ain't got to hunt. You done got quiet up in here. Y'all don't like truth today. Y'all, y'all, y'all. I know y'all must have had a rough day at work today, huh? Y'all, y'all must have had a rough one because y'all ain't live y'all like pastor. <laughs> we gonna come back Sunday. We can't take all that truth. That's just way too much in one Thursday. Good Lord Jesus, come on here, but it's still truth, even if you tired or not. It's still the truth. And see, God is trying to get us to a place where we're not running folks out before they even get to come in. They want to be able to be the love of God draws them with loving kindness have I drawn thee that's why in this house if you ain't loving trust me I'm gonna come have a conversation with you oh why well, lift your hands and wear stuff and tell me that you love God but you being evil to your neighbor who you see every day that's why the world is not being drawn because the reality is we ain't loving so in other words our words and our actions disconnect I love God, but you mean, I love God, but you don't talk to nobody. Watch this. I love God, but you're jealous. I love God, but I hate people. Wrong daddy. Tap your neighbor and say, wrong daddy. Good Lord Jesus. He keep going back to that. Somebody got the wrong daddy. Oh, you better find out. The wrong daddy. Good Lord Jesus. Okay, anyway, I'm back. All right, verse 2. In those days, Daniel, I, Daniel, was mourning three full years. I ate no food or ate no pleasant food. In other words, he was fasting. Watch this. No meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself. I ain't trying to look cute because I got purpose. Oh, my God. When you really want to seek God, you're not going to be trying to go after the fleshly things. You're going to try to set yourself in accordance that I need to hear God. Look what it says. Nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. 21 days of fasting. Kingdom word, we did three days. Let me stop right here. We might have to stop the whole Bible study right here. I called a three-day fast. Some of y'all cussed me out in the spirit. Some of y'all was mad. You was angry. How is our pastor going to ask for three days of just water? It's real quiet. Y'all feel that hush that just came across it? Because you're all guilty. God trying to drive somewhere so we can see miracles. When we sit back, I, I still remember the young lady with stuff that was in that wheelchair that was right here. And remember, I walked her across there, and then she came back with stuff weeks later. She wasn't in the wheelchair. When you see stuff like that, and you see cancer healings, and you see God move, and, 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 and uh, at the revival, there was the three ladies that came up, and God started having me deal with them because of their legs and stuff. Apostle Spivey called me, he said, Two of the three ladies have already called and they've said, man of God, tell the man of God that prayed for us. We don't even have any problems with our legs anymore. If you see in bona fide miracles, that's because we're pushing. So there has to be a sacrifice. Jesus is a sacrifice. And so when we call a fast, it's not the thing of you grumbling about the fast. Understand God's trying to break something off of you. 
So I don't look like the world. I don't act like the world. Because when we fast, it ain't even about your enemy. It's about God dealing with your spirit. When I fast, I understand God is not trying to break my enemy off. He's trying to break my enemy off. Me. I got stuff that I need to still get delivered from, set free from, and it's the reality. He says, David, I need to get at you. And I'm like, oh, man. But here it is. Here's the disconnect. We'll stand in church. God, just touch me, God. Deliver me, God. Bless me, Lord. And he say, okay, let me get at you then. Ooh, no, no, no. I ain't mean like that. No, don't, don't correct my lying and my cheating and my no, no God. Mm -mm. No, I just want the good stuff. And I got quiet up here. I just want the good stuff. Don't correct my bad mouth. That matches my bad attitude. That matches my, I'm almost close to sliding in hell right now, but thank God I come every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Then I got tight up in here. Oh, oh, God, here it is. Do, should, should I put the cigarette down? You can if you want to get delivered. With God, all things are possible. Do, do I need to stop lying on somebody because really I'm really jealous of them? Because I have an insecurity because I was damaged and I was abandoned when I was a child or I was molested. Can, can I deal with those issues? And he says, if you let me, if you let me, I can heal you. I can deliver. I can set you free from those things. But the reality is we hold on to stuff because a lot of us like the pity party. Some of us like that people will come up and say, uh, what's 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 wrong with you? And then we said, well, you know, you got about 50 minutes. I got to tell you about just this one situation. Wait a minute. Did God deliver you? Is he still on the throne? Is he able to do it? Oh, I don't know. It's rough out here. Where are you at in your spirit? Are you already defeated, but you're lying and saying you were the winner? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. So Daniel understands it's going to take 21 days of fasting. I'm going to put this out there. Kingdom word, we're going to be fasting. Amen. Look at that. Feel that? You hear that? One clap. Don't try to clap now. Stop. Y'all too late. As soon as I said fast, y'all like. Pastor. Don't you know Thanksgiving is coming up? <laughs> you really going to make us fast? It's still October and they already. <laughs> Can we wait to the new year? How you know you're going to make it to the new year? How you know you're going to make it to the new year? How you know you're even going to make it in November? Mm -hmm. He says some only come out by fasting and prayer. Daniel goes into, I'm not anointing myself. I'm not eating. I'm focused. 21 days he stays with no water. He had number water and he's focused because when you really want to hear God, you'll do what you need to do. Now. Some of the people clapping, you ain't going to do it. <laughs> Let's be honest. We ain't got to lie. Some of us will get into it. Pastor, I got two days. But man, that last day. The temptation is to get you to break what you said you would do. His ideology is that I want to make you a liar like me. That's why you can't bow a bow. Right. Ain't nobody talking to me. I'm all over the Bible. I'm hitting scripture after scripture. I can't bow a vow that I'm not going to hold to. It's better for me not to even do it. Don't vow to vow if you know you can't do it. And you know where you are. Don't you raise your hand and be like, yeah, we fasted, pastor. And you know without a shadow of a doubt, when Thursday come, it's a wrap. Then I got quiet up in here. 
Okay, so I'm going to ask my question right now. How many of y'all fasted today? A little less than normal. You did? I'm proud of you. Okay. Okay, so some of y'all did. Okay. Good. Good. Here it is. Why do we fast every Thursday? And it's really not a whole day fast. It's a denial. It's 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And some of y'all at 6.05, y'all eating up everything known to man. I know y'all, I feel y'all every week. Y'all like, oh, man, wait till 6. <laughs> oh, Jesus. How are you standing there at 5.54? You got a chicken wing in your hand. <laughs> standing your butt in front of a clock. <laughs> Watch this. It lets me know that your flesh is still driving you. I'm on 10. I went and got, I got that food. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I got the clock. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, 6 is going to be here. Ain't praying. Ain't reading. Watch this. Focus in, watch this, and here's the danger. Focusing in on what my body says. See, I'm trying to train your spirit that there's a spiritual realm that you can live in that's greater than what your body is saying. And when you get into that spiritual realm, you can tell your body to do what you... How do I know? Here's my testimony. I'm going to let y'all go. Early in, because in, I'm starting to reflect over these 30 years of me preaching. And as I get to this 30th year, I'm sitting back and I'm watching. I'm saying, man, I have been through all kinds of hell. And me and my sister have been talking about several different things. I'm like, man, I can't believe I got through that, through that. One of the things was um, I was being rebellious, and I did not want to stay away from sports. I was constantly because I was driven because I was pretty good. Had an arrogance. Had a pride. At a particular point where stuff going into my senior year, way back, I'm had to date myself. Lord have mercy. Back in the early nine, in the, um, <laughs> okay, I'm 51 years. Back in 1989, some of y'all don't even know them numbers. <laughs> going into my senior year, where stuff top 100 in the nation of basketball. I got memorabilia and stuff, and Natalie's seen some of the stuff we got because I had to bring some things here, trophies and stuff. And I don't even talk about that world because that world don't exist to me anymore. Yeah. Flying around the country, camps and stuff, when they first had stuff like blue chips camp, that stuff is prominent now. But back then it was just starting. And I wanted to play basketball so hard, football, all that stuff. Senior year, broke a collarbone. My sister used to call me the China boy. Football scholarships, basketball scholarships. I'm like, I can go anywhere I want to go. Senior year, third game, dude put his helmet right in my shoulder, snapped his, snapped his shoulder in half. It healed. Basketball season come up. I'm like, well, I'm going to keep my basketball scholarships. I'm in practice, and they said it had healed. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm a, okay, fool. I lost football, but now I got basketball. Guy runs into me and snaps again. Two times, same year. Scholarships, everything, gone. And I'm like, he really want me to preach, but I ain't going to do it. I'm coming against it. <laughs> Get to Oral Roberts University, and I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm, I'm going to keep it going. I'm going to keep trying, keep trying. Year before, I ended up having a major surgery. I had this elbow snap out. Then I kept playing, kept trying. <laughs> The system was like, you need to let that stuff go, man. You need to go, go preach, dude, because everything, every time. And I'm like, no, no. When you want something so bad and it's not God, you'll open up doors that'll mess you up. And the last one, I go up to try to dunk on a guy, and I missed. I got mad, got angry. I'm going down to court, and I'm mad out of anger. I slash down on him like this to try to popped the ball because I was bad. I was in a bad spirit. I did just like this. He happened to be bringing his leg up like that, caught my arm, snapped it in half, and it turned sideways. They drove, y'all what, drove 13 hours because they took me to emergency surgery because I went into shock. I grabbed my elbow and my arm because I'm watching my elbow facing this way. I had split it across here and split it like here. If 
five hour surgery, 15 pins to put it back together. They said, I'd never use it again. It was like, you're done. And I'm walking in brace and stuff like this for you. It was a long time. And I said, God, I'll stop doing what I just told. I've learned my lesson. If you will heal my arm, you ain't got to worry about me or no basketball, nothing else, nothing else. Please just heal me. And I heard a word, and that was when Diane Palmer was in Waukee. She said, she said, huh? Oh, yeah, I was bowling too. Why you got to tell all my stuff? I'm telling this story. And I began to ask God, and I had got, got received a word, and this prophet said, no longer is it going to be basketball, but you're going to start dribbling for the kingdom. And I submitted to it. I said, okay, five-hour surgery, Demerol, lit, pain, go to third therapy, and they're like, your, your arm's not going to move. It's not going to work. And I'm like, no, I submitted my life to God now. It's going to happen. After a period of time, I walk out of the hospital. Bye, y'all. <laughs> we'll see you. Because God can do it, but you have to believe. Yes. There is something in the spiritual realm that's deeper than what your natural is. And I had to understand, I've got to go to the spirit, the spirit of God, for him to deal with my natural. This is the battles that we have to deal with because these principalities and powers are real. And when you make that determination, I'm going to go to the spirit, it'll affect your natural. Now, I'm going to stop right here because Daniel is in this 21-day fast, and he's looking for the word from God to come. But there's something happening in the atmosphere that's stopping that word from coming, and it happened to be principalities, demonic structures that are in the airwaves shutting down what you should be receiving. What am I trying to tell you? When you pray, don't stop. Because when you're praying, just because you don't get the answer immediately, don't mean it ain't coming. Mm -hmm. Delayed, but not denied. Hear what I'm saying tonight. Delayed, but not denied. You will see a battle demonically in the heavens. But if you're on God's team, he sends help. You're not fighting by yourself. And this is what we have to understand. We're not fighting by ourselves. God has something that's in store that he's trying to teach us, train us why you're fighting these spirits. And that you're going to win if you don't faint. Okay? Now, tonight, we'll get ready. Uh, I know I don't throw a lot at, at you guys tonight, but we have to deal with this stuff because deception is rising like never before. Yes. People are being deceived thinking that everything's fine. Yes. They're going about their business like ain't nothing happening. Yes. And the sadness is in the midst of that deception, you don't understand that the principalities and powers are maneuvering themselves. Yes. They're positioning themselves so you can take the mark of the beast. So you can be deceived. So you'll think, oh, that's them over there. That has nothing to do with us. No, it has everything to do with us. Here's the positioning. America has decided to back Israel. God says, whoever blesses Israel, I'll bless you. As long as America stays Behind Israel, we're going to be good to a certain degree. But that other degree, we're going to have to war through. You'll have to be able to stand when demonic stuff starts heightening. It's going to increase, but the power of God is going to get even more real. Okay? Y'all got it? Yeah. You receive it? Yeah. Stay in prayer and stay focused. It's not the time to get yourself out of pocket with God, stay focused with him, make sure you're praying. And when the Holy Spirit tells you to do X, Y, and Z, you do exactly what he tells you to do. Don't deviate. 
be obedient, submit to what the Spirit of God is saying. He'll confirm it in his word, and you will eat the good of the land. You will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. All right? Amen. Okay, good. Let's pray tonight. Spirit of the living God, we thank you. We thank you for this time that we recognize that we are truly in the end times. We are here. We're at that time period. And we do recognize that the enemy would try to come in and bring deception. He tried to grab and pull even those that would be open to hear an alternative voice. We pray tonight, God, that you give us wisdom that surpass all understanding that God Another we will not follow. We speak the book of John chapter 10 over the lives of these, your people, God, that they would have an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And God, we will not follow anybody but you. We thank you tonight for how you will cause us, Lord God, to hear in a different dimension than we've ever heard before. Order our footsteps. Give us the ability to be obedient to what you're saying, what you're doing, how you're building us, how you're ministering to us, that our relationship with Jesus Christ will be so real, it's more real than the stuff we touch. We pray for this wisdom tonight. We pray for understanding God because this is a urgent time period. We pray, God, that we would have the spirit of boldness, that we would ask and go out into the highways and byways and compel other men and women to come. That, God, we'd start asking people, hey, why don't you come to church with me? Give us boldness. We pray for the spirit of evangelism because we know that the rapture is soon to come. We recognize that you're touching the heart of men and women of God to get in alignment with truth. And let truth have its perfect work because there's patience there in our spirit. Thank you for giving us patience, God, that we would understand the time and the season in which we live in. We pray even over this house, the spirit of Issachar, the ability to be able to discern times and seasons, where we are, what you're doing, how you're doing it, God, and you will direct us like never before. And God, I pray for the increase of our spiritual walk with you. We pray even tonight, God, that you would give us a determination to pray without ceasing, constant communication back and forth with you, that you would speak to us. We pray, God, even now against the spirit of heaviness, depression, oppression, Break it tonight. Give us revelation, Lord God, of where we are in your timeline and how you're calling for a church without spot or wrinkle. We pray tonight, remove our wrinkles. Straighten us out. Let us be stretched out that we can stand against the wiles of the devil because we have the full armor of God on and that even today, God, we have an assignment, Lord God, in the earth to seek and to save that which is lost. We pray for those, God, all around us, family members, friends, acquaintances, associates that might come into our sphere of influence. We pray, God, that we would have a boldness because of the time in which we live in, God, that we will not hold back the gospel or the truth of Jesus Christ, but we will live it, we will show it, we will demonstrate it. And God, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit even now to rest upon us. Anoint us for this time period. Anoint us for this time period, God, that we would have a mind that none will be lost. No one will go to hell. Nobody will be lost, God because we will be about our Father's business. Set us on fire. That we might be able to burn up everything that's not like you, God. Wherever we go, God, we would burn up the things that would hold people that we come in contact with. 
We pray for deliverance. We pray for healing, God. We pray for miracles. We pray for signs and wonders. Give us an urgency in our spirit, God, that like never before, Lord God, we don't want to see one person lost. Use us wherever we go. We pray the spirit of boldness, the line of the tribe of Judah, that we will not, we will not be fearful, God, but we will stand boldly decreeing and declaring salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. That even in this place, God, I thank you for what you're doing. Continue, God, to bring people into this church that they can find a place in the ark, God. Thank you for filling the ark. Feel the ark, God. Feel this sanctuary, God, with those that need a touch from you, healing from you, deliverance from you, miracles from you, God. Thank you for the salvation of souls. God, as you do it, we give you glory. We give you honor, we give you praise, God, you're building us up for such a time as this. And God, we give you glory for it. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree and declare that no weapon formed against us will prosper. No weapon, no weapon. And we will be victorious because we know the coming of your son, Jesus Christ is soon. And God, we're in position going to be about our father's business to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to those that need to know that there is a way of escape there is a way that seemeth right unto man but God you're drawing by your spirit draw them Lord God into safety into salvation and we await your coming release your power your authority us like never before that we would focus and be about our father's business and we know God you will get the glory the honor and all of the praise and we thank you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus we pray woman of God right there or right there lift your hands woman of God When you came in, I heard God say, I sent you here for a renewal, even in your spirit. God says, I've spoken words concerning who you are in the spirit realm and what I want to do with you. And God says, even the more you'll understand that the purpose and destiny for your life has never been aborted. But God says, I release even now a fresh anointing upon you. That from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, God says, I've been speaking to you in dreams and in visions. The dreams and the visions in which you've been seeing, one of God, God says, I've been speaking with a clarity to you. But you've been asking God, where is the fire? Where is a place that I can receive your Shekinah glory that will confirm, that will speak? Where I can be renewed and strengthened. God says, I heard your cry, I heard your prayer. And as soon as you came in, God says, you submitted to my spirit because you felt my spirit in the place. God says, even as you began to kneel and you began to seek God, because people don't know what you need. They don't know what you're crying out for. But God says, I know. God says, even tonight, I confirm and reaffirm to you, I'm able. I'm able. Your prayer request, what you placed up before God, God says, I heard it and I'm moving even now. God says, eyes not have seen, nor ears heard, nor has it entered the heart of man what I have for you. God says, exactly what I exposed to you, what I revealed to you. God says, I'm causing the wind to begin to be beneath your sail. God says, I'm setting you back up so you can move again. So you can move again in the spirit understanding revelation and I hear this God says there's healing in his wings what you've asked for concerning healing God says I'm getting ready to move God says it's dimensional it's not just natural it's spiritual the renewing the renewing of healing God says it's getting ready to even flow and you're gonna feel it like never before yeah, you came to the right place. 
You came to the right place. You were questioning it. Yep, but God says, no, I led you here. Did he not lead you here? He told you to come directly to this church. I've never seen you before, woman of God, but I don't need to know you. I know you by the spirit. God says, I've led you here because I want to change your garment. I spoke to you concerning. God says the old garment from the old season won't work in this new time. And you've been saying, okay, God, where? Where? And God says, go to that church. Tonight we decree and declare the changing of your garment. That the very thing in which you, you prayed for. Because I see you on the side of the bed. I see you on the side of your bed and you ask God for it. And now this is your confirmation that the very thing that you ask God, because I don't know you, exactly what you asked for, God says, yes, I'm going to give it to you. and I'm going to change your garment and I'm going to even change your praise. Praise is your weapon. I literally see you in the car and God says, yep, you keep cranking that praise up. Keep cranking it up. Yeah, I see the car. I see exactly what's going on. And God says, even as you're in that car and you're praising God, God says exactly the praise and the specific songs that you keep putting on repeat. That, that specific song. Yeah, because it's meant to your spirit. Yeah, God says, this is how you're going to know because I don't know you, but I know what you're doing in the car because I can see it. You keep hitting repeat, pow, repeat, pow, repeat. Ain't that right, woman of God? Thank you. I ain't no false prophet. I know exactly what's going on. God says, you hit and repeat because God says, I'm driving out of your spirit the very thing that would try to stop you because it's your strength. Praise is your strength. You feel a renewing when you praise. You feel a joy when you praise. Depression leaves when you praise. God says, even in that car, God says, and I even see you in the shower doing it, and that's amazing, you keep doing it too. You keep singing the song in the shower, that's really crazy, it's in your spirit. You don't even need it on the radio. You don't even need it on, on, on your, your, none of your devices. You're literally praising, and God says, all of that is culminating to strengthen your spirit against the attack that's been trying to come after you even for the last three to four months. God says that attack over the last three to four months, God says, I cancel it even now. The very aspect of what it is, it's been trying to even attach itself to your mind and your spirit. I hear this in the spirit, almost trying to water you down. God says, not so. Even as you seek me, God says, I'll be there. And you'll find me. You'll find me. You'll find me. Is there any, anybody else who want prayer tonight? I'm just going to say this because I hear it in the atmosphere. If you need prayer, stand. If you want me to pray for you, stand. Mm -hmm. That whole world, that, these people, this is where I was at, right here. Yeah, right here, this is where God was like, right there. Right there, thank you. Okay. Lift your hands, lift your hands. The strength of God, the presence of God. You here and you right here, God says, you come seek me. You come seek me, said God. I'm going to speak. It won't be through the word, it will be through you seeking. Because what you're asking for, I want to give it to you face to face. You too. Got it? Face to face. Face to face, because God is building you. They prophesied you being a minister a long time ago. It was spoken over your life, God says, but not in the right, in the right house. Because God said he didn't want any corruption in it. He wanted to pull you away so he could do it in you. But he had to show you what was real first. And I see that now that God has you, now you're on fire. God says even as your hands are even speaking to people, you find yourself talking evangelistically all day long. You invite everybody named Mama. God says, confirm to him exactly what you see. As your pastor, I see you inviting everybody. Because God says, as you do, you'll find that I'm working some stuff in you and I'm working some stuff out of you. God says you're on a fast track. Don't let anybody water you down. Do not allow anybody to try to give you religion when God is removing religion from you because there's people attached salvation-wise to your life. God says you'll find me 
in the seek. You'll find me in the seek. You too, in the seek. Y'all can sit. You right there, God says, I've been dealing with you. Even in dreams. God says, from the time you walked in, you've been watching. God told me, don't minister to her yet. Let her keep coming back. Because I'm doing something in her spirit. Because she's seeing truth for the first time and it don't look like religion. It's intriguing. It grabbed you and said, what is this? God says it's the spirit of God. It's the truth of who he is. That he is very real. And your spirit feel like you've been on fire. God says that's him burning out what would be lies. Because truth wants to come from you and through you. That's why you've been inviting people. Because God says, I'm speaking to your spirit because I'm showing you who I am. That there's destiny. God says there's many gifts inside of you. These gifts he wants to cultivate. He wants to build them up. And he's saying, would you give me your life? Would you hand it over? Because as you do, God says, I'll show you the peace of God that you've always desired. Where people have sat back and looked at you and said, ah, this or that or whatever, but they don't know how gifted you are. They don't know how awesome you are in God. And God says, tell her I have always loved her. There's always been a love because you seek affirmation and you seek love. And God says, when it did not come from who you thought it should come from, God says, I've always been there. God says, I've been the one that has kept you and been there and sustained you and made you greater than even what you even know that you really are. And God says there's healing coming to you even now. I'm going to heal you of the hurt. I'm going to heal you of the pain. When people misunderstood you, talked against you, didn't know who you really were. God says, tell her he sees how you have a, such a great heart. You're actually a great person but misunderstood. Because how can the devil understand the greatness that's in you when he's blind? God says, as you seek me and give me your life, God says, I'll flip it upside down and I'll make it greater than you've ever known. God says, the very dreams and the visions that you say you want to be and who you want to be like and what you want to do, God says, in me, I can make them happen. In me, God says, I can order your footsteps and the doors that would not open, I'll cause them to open. But it will come from you saying yes to him. And the yes will open the doors to this new life that God has for you. This is the word of the Lord to you. I hear God say, tell her I love her. When others will not tell you that they love you, God says, I'm not worried about them. I love you and God's love trumps anything and all hurt and pain that you've been through young lady do you understand me he has never left you even when you thought he wasn't there even when you didn't know he was there he's always been there and he will not leave because he loves you like that. For such a time as this, there is strength within you. And God says, there's a level of my power, my authority I want to reveal to you. God says, through the salvation of your soul, God says, I want to grab you and pull you out of darkness and pull you into the light. God says, there's been things that have been tantalizing even at your door that would try to have you to even move into things of darkness or to see that there is a power through demonic activity. But God says, not so. God says, this is your wake up call because I don't know you, man of God, but I call you a man of God because God says, I have placed something on the inside of you. But the enemy has been trying to bring you into darkness, into mischief, to things that would cause you to be in a level that God is saying, I'm not pleased with. But God says, even in here tonight, God says, I want to break that spirit and I want to break the things that would hold you so you can come into a place of wholeness. God says, if you will submit to me, I will break the enemy's back and I will cause you to come out of darkness into light. You will not be drawn to that which is dark, but you will 
cling to that which is life. And God says you need life all around you. Every situation and circumstance that you want done in your life, it seems to fall to the ground and die. It seems to fall and not be prosperous. But God says in me, you can live, move, and have your being. God says there's a level of authority and a leader that's on the inside of you that has yet even been woken. God says in me, I will wake it up and I will cause you to be able to draw others that will come into the kingdom of God for such a time as this, because I'm going to work through those that are from the age of 18 to 35. God says, I'm getting ready to work with them and move in them in a way if they'll submit to my spirit. God says, I'll show you what power is. You like money a whole bunch, but God says, I'll show you what money really looks like. I'll show you the power that is in me, said God, because if you will yield yourself to me, give me your life, let me lead and guide you and not the plan that you see from others and even the plan that you have in your mind. God says, I'll lead you to a path that's higher than you, greater than you. And God says, I'll restore all of the hurt and the pain and the thinking that you're by yourself. I will restore in you who I've always called you to be. God says, there's giftings, there's callings on the inside of you, but you don't know anything about them. You don't know what God has for you because it's almost like you've been in a desert wandering trying to figure out what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? You've actually said that over the last month. What am I supposed to do? What is the things I'm here for? What am I to do? And God says, in me, I'll show you the path. I'll show you exactly what I designed you for. And it's not the street. It's not the street. It ain't street game. It ain't even selling drugs. No, that's not what he wants for you. Because if you take that road, you'll be locked up within three years. God says, this is your warning tonight that I'm speaking to your spirit to pull you out of the dark place and to let you know there's a light that God says, run to the light. So you will not fulfill what others have cursed on you. I hear somebody saying over you, if you don't change, you're going to be just a statistic. God says tonight, it can be broken, but it will be by your decision. It will be by your decision. Do I get real with God and give him my life and take me into truth? Or do I still try to do it my way? because the influences around you are speaking. They're speaking more than you're speaking. And you're being drawn by what they are showing you. Just because they got a pocket full of money don't mean it's legit. And you know it ain't legit. God says tonight, choose me today. Choose my way tonight. And I'll flip your life upside down and I'll cause you to be so legit in me. I'll order your footsteps and I'll make you greater than you've ever seen before. This is the word of the Lord to you. Warning is at the door. It's at the door. Lift your hands, man. Even for such a time as this, we decree and declare even over you. The influences that are around, God says, have an ear to hear what I'm saying understand that I created you in my likeness and in my image. God says, I created a purpose for you. And what's being spoken into your ears to do something that's contrary to what you know in your heart. God says, you ain't built like that. I didn't build you like that. I didn't build you to be a follower. God says, I built you to be a leader. Don't follow the ways of darkness and then run into it and lose everything but because you feel as if well I don't have the love that I should have had the support that I should have had it's in Jesus Christ no other person if heaven and earth pass away God says I'll still be there for you and God is trying to speak to your spirit tonight man for such a time as this the presence of God will visit you and to say there's another way there's another way and if you'll yield to that way God says I'll establish you I'll create what needs to be created for you 
that your ways will not be the ways of the world in destruction, but you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. There's purpose in your life. And the enemy been lying to you. But God has purpose. And it's a yes and it's an amen. It's a good and a very good. And this is the word of the Lord to you. Have an ear to hear. I need to find out about the things of God, the purposes of God, and then they'll be obedient to that because Jesus is real. Both of y'all wake up calls today. Wake up calls. There's something getting ready to happen. Little buddies that y'all hanging with. I hear in the spirit realm, police sirens. Be careful who you're hanging with. Because you're gonna open up a portal that you don't wanna go down. There's police sirens attached to this warning. And when they get busted, and you should have been there, you will know that a prophet spoke to you. And you know that God spoke to you because why? He loves both of you. He orchestrated you coming here so he could speak to you and say, there's another way. There's another way. All money ain't good money. There's another way. If you will heed the word of the Lord, there's another way in him. He can make what needs to be made for you righteous, holy, and in his plan, not what's being presented to you. This is the word of the Lord to you. I pray in Jesus' name. God cover both of them now. I come against the attacks of the enemy even now, Lord God, that makes them feel as if they don't even have a true father, a true mentor, someone that they can rely on, somebody can lead and guide them. God, I pray that you would cover them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Every demonic mindset that's trying to filter itself through them, I pray now, restore, remove it and destroy it now in the name of Jesus. Give them the mind of Christ. Give them the heart, God, to seek and to save that which is on. Let them recognize that you want to seek it to save them, even from themselves, even from those that don't want good for them. Cover them with the blood of Jesus, even now. I cancel every assignment of the enemy. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. I cancel the assignments that you have for them. Every negative assignment. We cancel it now in the name of Jesus, and we send it to the enemy command you to be off limits you are off limits these are off limits now in the mighty name of Jesus fill them with the love of God let them know God that you love them even when they were yet in sin you died for them, and you love them God in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen 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 Amen. It's good. Hutch, keep seeking him. We pray for healing now in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, God says, even as you continue to seek me, God says, I'm going to touch your physical body in a way that you're going to find that what is hindering you and holding you because you want to work, you want to do, you want to move, and sometimes your body does not do what it needs to do. God says, as you seek me, decree the healing that you need. Decree the healing that you need and stand on God's word. I want you in your assignment, I want you to find every healing scripture that you can in scripture and begin to read it constantly over and over. Get it in your spirit that he's already healed your body. And as you continue to navigate through those scriptures of his healing power, God says, I'm going to take root inside of you and I'm going to drive out what's been dealing with you for years. And God says, I'm going to find that spirit of infirmity is gone. 
because you're going to find that in his word, healing is a children's bread. This is your assignment. It's a road that he wants you to go on because your mouth is going to change. You're going to start speaking. I'm already healed. I'm already healed. I hear this in my left ear. God says, tell him that his daughter is picking up what she's getting from here. You hear me? I just saw that as she comes with you, you're questioning, is she picking up some? God says, she getting it. She just playing that with you as if she ain't getting it. God says she's getting it. The impartation is here. She's questioning, she's looking, and the search has begun. Just continue to bring her in and let the word do the work. You don't have to press you on to do nothing. You don't have to over the top hurt, none of that. Just be like, hey, church was good. And you're going to see she's going to open up and she's going to be like, I saw this. I saw that. I heard this. I seen this. The impartation is happening. And God's got it. All right? Good. Good, good. Eyes have not seen nor ears heard. He says, seek me and do what I told you to do. I'm going to tell you this and I'm, I ain't playing with you. God says, you know what I don't want you to do. Period. You ain't got to stand up for another prayer. Believe. Lift your hands. Believe. Believe. Stop doubting yourself. Believe. When belief get in your heart, change will come. When you believe that God has it, he'll change it. He's waiting on you, not you waiting on him. When you believe and stop doubting yourself, God says, I'll break everything that needs to be broken. And I say, I hear this. God says, even the move that's needed. The door that needs to be open. I see keys in the hand when you start believing. Keys, door, open, live. When you believe, nothing's too hard for God. Nothing. In God, all things are possible. This is the word of the Lord to you. Heavenly Father, we just thank and praise you tonight, God. We thank you for all that you are doing, all you've done, Lord God. Continue to minister to these, your people, God. And we thank you that even as we walk into the rest of the end part of this week, God, leading to Sunday, we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would just let your presence be upon us. Continue to minister to us. Give us understanding, wisdom, and knowledge, Lord God, that the season in which we live in is not to play with you, God, but to be real with you, God. And you would just have your way in us, God, in the name of Jesus. Remove anything, God, that's not like you. Move it, destroy it, God, and that you would be lifted up and glorified, Heavenly Father, in our lifestyle, God, that we live for you, Lord God. We live, we move, and we have our being. And God, we thank you that the best is yet to come. In the mighty name of Jesus, we receive a fresh anointing tonight, like never before. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Have you received something tonight? We thank God for what he's doing. All right. Here it is, Saturday, say Saturday.